Welcome back to Backstage Pass Rock News, where we dig deep into the stories behind the music. Today, we're sitting down with Mark Slaughter, the powerhouse vocalist who once fronted the legendary Vinnie Vincent Invasion. But this isn't your average rock tale. Mark's about to reveal what it was really like working with the notoriously enigmatic Vinnie Vincent, a guitarist whose genius was often overshadowed by his volatile personality. Behind the scenes of Hairspray and Heavy Riffs, a storm was brewing. Mark shares how he joined the band and the shocking moment Vinnie critiqued his vocals after a show, saying, I think that Vinnie didn't, uh, I don't think he really liked me as, as the singer from the very beginning, in my opinion. Um, I was, it was actually, uh, it was a last minute thing. They had uh, Alice Cooper tour and I think it was a month and a half before Robert said he wasn't going to do it. Um, there was a couple singers that were kind of up for that gig at that point. Um, uh, and uh, basically it came down to me. Uh, Mike Varney was uh, working with Rudy Sarzo and Tony McAlpine and Tommy Aldridge had a group that they were putting together, which is called Driver. And I said to the guys, I go, look, if I'm not going to do this, I'm going to go check it out and go maybe play with Driver or something like that. And then the label said, let's just take the kid. This is, you know, and I was 21 years old at the time. I mean, it was just, just crazy. So I ended up, you know, going out to L.A., dyeing my hair blonde, teasing it up to the moon. And then, you know, my guitar's back in the stand. And then all of a sudden I'm opening for Alice Cooper, which, you know, going from a guitar player, singer to just a singer was crazy. So I think that a good a good portion of that is is it wasn't what he was expecting for a singer. I think that he has in his mind of the perfect person, but he'll never have that perfection of who he wants to sing. You know, he's just never happy. He's just not happy with anybody that he works with, I think. Mark opens up about the challenges of navigating Vinny's perfectionism and mercurial moods. One time, and, and you know, Bobby spoke about that in his book, and it was one of those things. I it was one time we were we were opening for uh, for Alice Cooper, and it was the the intro tape was rolling, and Vinny turns to me and said, "You know, Mark, you really sounded like garbage last night. If you don't pull it together, you're not going to be in the next record." And then we started. Then we were on stage. And, you know, there's two different things that people would react to. Some people say, I don't need this. And then there's the fighters who will go out there and say, you know what? Uh-uh. And I went out there and I'm a fighter. So I went out there and performed more, did more, you know, as a singer. And I think that I fought my way through to where Vinny accepted me at some point as a singer on that second record where he, he seemed okay during the that whole process he was he was happy with the record but in hindsight again robert had his tonality i had my tonality we're you know it's a different thing we're two different people you mm -hmm. know i wish him well and i've i've said that over the years but you know he's he's got a problem with me he's got a problem with paul and you know i really don't care yeah. and it's irrelevant to me you know my 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 royalty statements say something totally different than vinnie vincent invasion yeah like you know three bucks or something <laughs> you know what i mean it's like you know in the scope of it all it's not even it's not even worth my time he needs money but i think that i think he wants to be accepted you know look in this side of it you know he was a guitar player in kiss i think that he did help kiss a lot in that time but you know gene and paul always had their thumb on it they were always in control of of, of steering that boat you know, I don't think he went in there and said, I'll take the helm. He's not that guy. He he had some good songs that I think that those guys said, hey, these are good songs. Let's make it ours. Um, and I think that was really what he brought to the table. But, you know, it's not it's not a talent show. It's about the songs. When you listen to Sirius Radio and you're listening to Her Nation, for instance, those songs make you feel good because it reminds you of the good times and it reminds you of where you were and the, and you realize that the music is positive and fun. It's not about, and then this solo for 40 minutes is just amazing. Right. It's, it's not about that. You know, as a guitar player, you might be able to take it for a couple of minutes, but bottom line is, is it's the songs and, and the soundtrack of our life. That's a key point with music. It always was, and I think that there are some people in this industry that need people to handle them to events and handle them into to go play a show or to go do that. And I think that when, when uh, you know, we were out of the band, 
there was no other records. There wasn't anything else that this guy did. There wasn't any other recordings that, that I'm aware of that, that are out there that, that he saw through. Meanwhile, you know, we're continuing to make music and go out there and play. And, you know, you have to be a certain type of person to want to get up at 3 in the morning and catch a flight and go do another show the next day. You've got to love it. It's, it's not just money. You've got to love doing it. Otherwise, you wouldn't do it. Again, it's a bottom line is it's about entertainment this is about the entertainment industry not the talent show yeah and i think that you know it's it's about getting the music out there if it's new music it should be as good as if not better than the music you did before but the bottom line is is i went and saw paul mccartney in 1995 with with strum and i i remember he played the he played the wings he played the beatles and he goes i got a new one for you and the whole place sat down and i thought wow this is one of the best songwriters one of the biggest iconic people in music and people just sat down was it worth the musical magic they created together until next time rock rebels keep rocking and stay tuned for more backstage pass rock news and remember live life loud <laughs>